This year, we dreamed of world peace. We, we dreamed, dreamed of deep, deep breaths, breaths and, and restful, restful sleep. sleep. We dreamed of love that lasts and suffering that passes. We, we dreamed, dreamed of doors open wide and, and a cure to, to disease. disease. We dreamed because to dream is to believe. For, For to, to dream, dream is, is to hope. hope. To, to dream, dream is, is to see. see. So make room in your being to dream yet again of a, a world, world without, without fear and, and a God that draws near. near. For it is almost Christmas. Love, Love is, is almost, almost here. here. May we dream to see and hope to believe. Let us worship Holy God. Well, Merry Christmas and welcome to Christmas Eve worship at First United Methodist Church of Ann Arbor. I'm the lead pastor here. My name is Nancy Lynn, and I'm just delighted to be with you on Christmas Eve. Sitting next to me is... Reverend Tim Kobler, and I'm the chaplain of the Wesley Foundation. And from all of us at the Wesley Foundation, we wish you a very Merry Christmas and many blessings for the new year to come. And also with us this evening is... Pastor Nick Berlanga. I'm the associate pastor here. I just want to say Feliz Navidad. It's a joy having you worship with us this evening. Now let's join together and celebrate the birth of Jesus. <laughs> Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. like to wish everyone in my FUMC family a very Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas! Merry Christmas. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. 
all went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Bring this Christmas merrily, ring, tell all the world Jesus is here. Loudly proclaim with one accord, a happy time, welcome the Lord. Bring Christmas bells, sound for a new, no birthday of Jesus is here. Hear of the news to all the young, tell it to all in every tongue. Bring Christmas bells, all and in Lord, your message ring, hear that from all. Come all ye people, join in the singing, repeat the story told by the ring. Ring Christmas bells, ring Christmas bells, ring the bright new ring, say Christmas ring. Now proclaim, ring one of one, ring a happy tale, now come the Lord. Ring Christmas bells, merrily ring, tell all the world Jesus is King. Now be proclaim, ring one of one, the happy tale, now come the Lord. Ring Christmas bells, sound for a new, no birthday of Jesus is King. Scripture continues in Luke chapter 2, verse 8. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord shone before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest heaven, heaven and, and on earth, earth peace among, among those, those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see the thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. For the word of God in Scripture... For the word of God among us. For the word of God within us. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
Damien was 10 or 11, the Christmas that he wrote to Santa. He and his family had been going through a kind of a rough time and he was feeling pretty disillusioned. His mom, a newly single mother, was doing her best to make ends meet, but they were struggling to even have enough to eat, let alone Christmas presents. They slept on a mattress on the floor. And they didn't have a television. So Damien wrote to Santa and he asked for either a radio so that they could have some sound from the outside world in their home or for an alarm clock so that he would be able to get himself up in the morning and not have to trouble his mother with that. Well, Christmas came and somewhat to his surprise, there was a gift for Damien from Santa. What was inside was not a clock, nor was it a radio. It was a clock radio. Everything he wanted all rolled up into one. Well, that single gift changed Damien's life. He had something to believe in, some hope that there was someone outside of his family that loved and cared for him. Today, Na Damien runs a nonprofit whose mission is to recreate the feeling of hope Damien experienced for kids in impoverished neighborhoods like East Harlem. I learned about Damien's story from the new documentary entitled Dear Santa. If you like adorable children and stories of humanity at our best, if you're looking to watch something this Christmas season that will both touch and inspire you, I definitely recommend it. The film tells the story of the United States Postal Service program called Operation Santa. For 107 years, the Postal Service has collected children's letters to Santa and then, then done everything they could to make the children's dreams come true. And isn't that what Christmas is all about? 
Our Advent theme this year has been those who dream. Because, as I said at the beginning of the series, the Christmas story is full of dreamers. Mary, Elizabeth, Joseph, Simeon, Anna, the shepherds, and the magi, they were all dreamers. Their dreams, though, weren't about clocks or radios or a new bike or a puppy. Their dreams were of a Messiah, a Savior who would come and change the world, lift up the poor, heal the broken, and create a just world in which all of God's children were safe, healthy, and whole. That was the collective dream of their people, carried from one generation to the next, proclaimed by the prophets, longed for and prayed for as they lived under the rule of one foreign empire after another. What they didn't dream of was a baby. Well, at least not until the angel Gabriel came to visit Mary. More likely what they were expecting was a military leader, not a newborn, birthed in a stable and laid in a manger with the smell of cow dung and straw hanging in the air as he drew his first breaths. Not a tiny, helpless baby born to a working class family in a little village outside Jerusalem. But you know, that's the thing about dreams. Like Damien, who didn't even know such a thing as a clock radio existed, we don't always know what will fulfill them. But that's where God's dream comes into the Christmas story. God's dream that this little baby, whose birth we celebrate this night, born not to a prince or an emperor, but to an ordinary, poor, faithful family, this child would live among us and teach us how to love. Teach us to see the image of God, the beauty and creativity and potential and goodness of God in each other and in every other person in God's world. That's what incarnation is. Christmas is the celebration of God living and breathing, teaching and loving in the form of a human being, a tiny child who grew to be a man whose very life was God's love for us, expressed in human words and actions that we could understand and we could learn from. God's dream that if we could see the image of God in him, we could learn to see it in each other. Because that, ultimately, is what will bring peace on earth, as, an, as the angels announced to the shepherds. God's dream is that we live peacefully together, caring for each other, nation to nation, African American and Caucasian, straight, gay, lesbian, bi, cisgender, and trans, with every child having enough to eat and clean water to drink, every family having shelter and income. God's dream is for all of humanity to thrive and that peace prevail among us. Our task, living here in the 21st century and celebrating Christmas Eve, is to claim and embody that dream. The wonderful theologian Frederick Buechner once said, what keeps the wild hope of Christmas alive in a world notorious for dashing all hopes is the dream that the child who was born that day may be born again in us. Decades later, Nadia Boltz Weber explained the meaning of Christmas in similar terms. Christmas isn't about getting what you want or making sure you're giving others what they want. To experience Christmas is to trust that God can do this thing again. God can again be born in me, in you, in this broken mess of a gorgeous world. 
That's why Damien's story touches so many of us. I don't know if Damien is Christian. I don't know if he's even religious. But in his work to fulfill the Christmas dreams of kids in East Harlem, he has found his way of being God incarnate in the world. God has been born again in him. So how will God be born in you this new year? How will you embody God's dream? As people who follow the baby of Bethlehem, we are the inheritors of all God's dreams. We have this vision of God's kingdom woven into our own hopes for humanity, for the world. Like Mary, Elizabeth, Joseph, Simeon, Anna, the shepherds, and the magi before us, now we are those who dream. May it be so, and Merry Christmas. Amen. The gifts that you give to our church help us to do God's work in our community and in our world, to dream God's dreams. And the offering for this time of worship is to be used as seed money for outreach and mission projects. So I ask you today to take a moment and to give generously to the church. And as you do, we'll listen to our offertory music and I invite you to get out your phone or other device and Pass the peace by greeting someone through a text message or a recorded voice message. Let us spread the peace and joy of Christ at this time.
dreamed of freedom. In the wilderness, the people dreamed of safety. In Jerusalem, the people dreamed of a messiah. In Bethlehem, the shepherds and wise men dreamed of a new beginning. Then, several years later, Jesus walked this earth and dreams came true. The sick were healed. The poor had food. The forgotten and ignored were seen. The children were welcomed. Everyone was invited to the table, and the world has never been the same. So tonight, we are those who dream. Tonight, we dream the same dreams of our ancestors before us. Tonight, we dream of justice and mercy, of love and kindness, of peace and hope. Tonight, we dream of a God that draws near to us out of unfailing love. May this candle be a reminder that there will be a day when every dream will be fulfilled. And until then, we will be those who dream. Let us worship, holy God.
And now it's time for us to light our candles. In your advent boxes, you received a couple of wax candles and an LED candle, and you can choose whichever one you wish. But it's an opportunity for us to shine the light of Christ into the world. And Frank said, look at how a single candle can both defy and define the darkness. So I invite you to hold your candle and shine the light of Christ as we sing together, Silent Night. Let us pray this prayer of celebration for Christmas. Let us celebrate. God has come to be with us. On this night, we are reminded that God showed that God was with us. Born as a baby to experience the joy and sorrows of our human lives. Let us celebrate. God is with us in the joy of our Christmas worship and in the dullness of our daily routines. There is nowhere that God is not with us, no time that we journey alone. God is there in the laughter and in the tears. Let us celebrate. God is with us, Emmanuel. Even in the midst of troubles and pandemic, we do not have to fear because we know there is always hope. Hope in the form of a baby born to Mary 
in Joseph. Let us celebrate. God is with us. Come to earth in the form of Jesus, a person who has experienced all that we as humans experience, felt what we feel. Jesus showed us how to share from God's abundance and suffered from want as he wandered through the desert. God feels our pangs of need and responds from experience, granting us peace. Let us celebrate. God is with us with love that conquers all, even death. God is with us this day and all days. Light the candles. Shout the good news. It is Christmas. God is with us forever. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive him. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let all be filled with the dreams of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Christ child. And may Jesus be born in you again this night. Merry Christmas. Amen.
Merry Christmas from the staff of FUMC. Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Okay, we should have something there. Uh...